These simple tips will help you use Zoom safely. You'll be able to avoid the Zoom bombers, those uninvited guests that cause disruptions. Think about them like party crashers. You didn't invite them, they show up, they make a mess, they get people upset. You can deal with them in much the same way. You just need to know a few simple precautions and some different things you can do if things start to go a little wonky. Zoom is still a fun way to have online connection. And after you watch this video, you're gonna feel much more comfortable about being able to do that safely. What you do is gonna depend a lot on what your meeting is about, how big it is, who's gonna be on the meeting, and how well you know them. The basic idea behind all the choices you make is that you wanna keep uninvited guests out, and you also want to be able to handle interruptions or disruptions or, or problems that show up, either intentionally or unintentionally. unintentionally. Those things happen. So they're good controls to know about. Today in this video, we're going to look at settings, default settings that will be applied to every Zoom meeting that you set up. We'll look at the invitation and the scheduling of a Zoom meeting, one that is more secure. And then we'll open up Zoom. I'll show you controls that you can set and choices you can make before people get on and then controls that you can use while people are on to help the whole thing go more smoothly. Underneath everything that you do to keep uninvited guests out is your invitation. You wanna make sure that you are only inviting the people that you want to come, only sending those people the access information for your Zoom meeting. So send it to them an email or a text don't send it by posting in a public place where anyone can see that information. The other step to keeping uninvited guests out is to make sure that it's not easy for them to guess or even use a program to randomly come across the access information for your call. So always use um, an ID that, that is generated for the meeting, not your personal meeting ID, and use a password. Those two things together make it more complicated for uninvited people to get into your meeting. They don't add much extra complication for people you want to invite. Now they have both a meeting ID and a password to use, or they can still use the link in the URL in the invitation you sent them. So let's get you started. Let's look at the settings that you set default settings that will be applied toward every Zoom meeting that you schedule. We're gonna start by looking at the default settings for your Zoom calls, your Zoom meetings. Whenever you create a new call, these are the settings that will be used to get it started. You do have some ability to change these once the call has started and when you're doing the invitation, and we'll look at that later. To get to these settings, you're going to go to your favorite browser and you're going to go to the zoom.us website. Okay? So type zoom.us in your, in your um, window on your browser, sign in to your Zoom account, and you'll come to a screen like this once you hit the settings button. Okay? Go to your settings. There are lots of different settings here and I'm gonna concentrate on the ones that we're concerned about for keeping uninvited people out of your meeting and then for what you can do during the meeting to minimize disruptions. Some of these I'll tell you exactly what I suggest. Some of them it's gonna depend on the kind of meeting that you have. So we're in our settings. Now I'm scheduling a meeting. Let's click through these. What I want you to see, some of these are locked by admin. So what has happened is Zoom is right now requiring you to put a password on your meetings, which is a really good thing. Like we talked about before, that decreases the chance of somebody being able to guess how to get into your meeting. So that's a good thing. And now let's go down to in-meeting basics. 
Here's where you need to make a decision. Do you want to have the chat window available for you to chat with your participants, for people to chat with themselves, for people to chat with everybody? All those kinds of things to think about with a chat window. This is your default setting, so you can fine tune this later for each individual meeting. I usually leave it on. Let the chat window be there. Also let people talk privately one-on-one -on -one with each other. And I adjust that setting on a per meeting basis. Another interesting one is to turn your co-host ability on. What that does is let you choose to tag somebody else as being able to handle the controls the same controls that you have in terms of participants and managing them, which can be really helpful in a time when something is disrupting, whatever that is, whether it's just extra sound in the room. So I usually have that one on. I also like to be able to put somebody on hold to temporarily remove them from the meeting. Another one I suggest because it will make your life easier in taking care of the meeting is to always show the meeting control bar. It'll always appear at the bottom of your screen during the meeting. Very helpful for managing this type of thing. Screen share is one of the opportunities for your participants and for you to interact with each other. It's where you can show either a full view of your computer screen or a picture or some other application. You have the choice about who can share, only you, or if everybody in the meeting can share, and who can start sharing when somebody else is sharing the screen. I generally keep this on as a default, and then I adjust it later if I'm making a particular meeting where I don't want people to be able to share, which happens a lot, so I leave this one on. I also make sure that I can start sharing when somebody else has the screen so I can remain have control of what's happening. Two other things that allow you to directly inter interact with people on the screen and people to interact with you are annotation, which means they can actually draw and make um, write things on the screen while you're sharing your screen, and a whiteboard, which is just a white background, which elect allows you to all write and share on the screen. I have these turned on in general. If you don't want to ever have these, this is where you turn them off as a default. All right, and then allow participants that have been taken out to rejoin. I don't like to do that, so I turn that one off. And oops, I missed what I wanted to show you, the waiting room. Let's just bring this all into view here. Right now, Zoom is making the waiting room on by default. And I'm going to show you more about that once we actually get into the Zoom call and I can show you what it looks like. This is something you're going to have to decide if it works well for your particular type of call or meeting. For some it's a good idea, for others it's really um, heavy and requires a lot of effort that you don't want and you don't need. But here's where you can turn it on and off by default. And these are just different notifications. So we're done with all the settings that really apply to controlling who comes into your meeting and being hand, able to handle the people while they're in your meeting. Let's look at the choices that you make every time you schedule a new Zoom meeting, a new Zoom call. Most important thing on this dialogue in terms of safety is the meeting ID that you're going to use. You want this meeting ID to be unique and to be as complicated as possible for it so that it's not easy for someone to guess. Or I'm not talking about a person getting guessing, but a program guessing. Not easy for an automatic program to run through all the combinations and find a number that lets them into a call. The best way that you, to do that is to generate your ID automatically a new one for every meeting, and to require a password that makes that combination of numbers more complicated and longer. Those two things will help a lot in keeping unwanted people out of your meeting. 
You can choose about your video. Now let's go all the way down to the advanced options. I've already opened them up. Here's where you can enable a waiting room for your particular call. And we'll look at what that means once we get on Zoom. You can also let people join before you do. I rarely will let that happen. You can decide if you want to mute participants when they're coming in. I often have that one set. Again, here's a spot where you can choose that only authenticated users can join. That means they have to be signed into their Zoom account in order to join your meeting. So this is the way you are setting up a particular meeting that you are scheduling. So we had the defaults we set before. Now we're deciding how we're going to open our Zoom meeting. Next step, let's actually go into Zoom and see what we can do once we're there. Here's what the new invitation looks like for a Zoom meeting now when you use a password. You can see that the URL here that people can use to join the meeting is now much longer. And if you're going to use the meeting ID rather than the URL, you also will be asked to input a password. That the same will happen whether you're using your app, the Windows client, or you're actually just calling in to be heard and to hear on the phone. Once you call in your number, you'll have to give the meeting ID and the password. So this is what the new information looks like now that we're using passwords. You're on the call and you're a little early, so you have time to look at the controls and set things up to give people on your call the abilities they need, but not too much, to help keep distractions out of your meeting. First thing you're gonna think about is sharing the screen. Do you want everybody to be able to share their screen, either their whole computer screen or a picture or some other thing on the screen, or do you only want yourself to be able to share the screen? One of the things that people sometimes have trouble with is they come down to this green share screen button and they click on it not knowing what it is and all of a sudden their whole computer screen is showing to everybody on the call and they don't want it to and they can't stop it. But you can help avoid that situation and help avoid the situation if an uninvited guest gets in and they want to take over your call with this menu. The up arrow menu beside the share screen, advanced share options, and now who can share? I'm going to most often set this to only host so that I'm the only one who can share on the call. And that just helps keep distractions and potential problems from happening. Next thing to look at is the chat window. What do you want to use this chat window for? Is it for you to talk to the people on the call if you need to send them something text? Is it for everyone to talk to themselves, the whole class to be speaking together? Is it for one person to be able to talk and have an individual conversation with another person? You can control that again here with another more menu that lets you choose. Maybe in this case, you know who's going to be on the call. It's small. You're going to let them all talk to whoever they want to talk to. These different controls and the choices you make are going to depend on who's on the call, how well you know and can trust them, and how many people are on the call. Also, what is the purpose of your meeting? If you're having a work meeting and everybody needs to be able to share their computer screen, you need to leave that option open. Being a big public meeting where you're mostly going to be talking, then that's not something you want other people to be able to do. Let's look at the Manage Participants window. This window has a lot of good controls, both for before the meeting starts and once it's going. It will show you who's in the meeting, Right now, that's only me. It will let you mute everybody at once. Really good control to know. It will let you mute people individually. Also really handy. What happens when a dog barks or something's happening and you need to help someone turn their sound off? For now, let's look at the more menu in the bottom. Here are some things that you can do that affect what happens as people join your meeting. Are they muted? Are they able to unmute themselves later? Can they give themselves a new name in their little window? Are they being put into the waiting room? I set up this meeting with a waiting room, so anyone who joins the call 
is going to be put into a waiting room before they come here and join me. I can also control that here in this menu. So those are the controls I want you to know about before anybody else joins the meeting. Let's see if we can't get some other people to join the meeting with us. Now we have two other people waiting to join the meeting. They're in the waiting room. And what they're looking at is a message on their screen that says they are in Marcia Chadley's waiting room and will be brought into the meeting when I admit them. You have the choice on your side of the screen. You can see everybody in the waiting room. If there's a longer list, there'll be a scroll bar over here. You can admit people one at a time or remove them one at a time, depending on who they are and if they're supposed to be in your meeting. Or you can admit them all. You can also send them a message. So this is a way to control who actually steps into your meeting. It will continue to be open even after I admit this group of people. So if someone comes in later, I'm going to have to be watching and let them in if that's what I want to do. This is one good reason for having a co-host in your meeting who can actually be watching the waiting room if you want to use it and let people in who should be let in and doing some of these other controls, muting and other things, so you don't have to worry about them once the meeting starts. Let's let all these people in, and then we'll see the other things that we can do once people are in the meeting. Okay, we're all in the meeting. I'll let you see, there's the, the third participant in this meeting. And now in the participants window, you can see everybody. You'll be able to mute me. These two people actually are not signed in with their audio, so I can't mute them, but if they were, I would be able to mute them, just like it's shown here. You can go to the More menu on any person, and you can stop their video. Again, if something happens in the background and you need to suddenly stop their video or help them because they can't figure out how to do that, you can turn their video off. You can also make them a co-host if you have somebody that you want to have help you in the meeting. You can put them in the waiting room. You can even help them by renaming them if you need to know who they are. Handy feature here that I want you to see at the bottom of that menu is remove. If you have someone that needs to leave the meeting and can't figure out how, or someone that you need to have leave the meeting, you have that control from this participant's window. Again, the mute all is another big feature of this window. So I often have this up when I am the host of the meeting and I can put it off to the side when I'm not trying to show you what I'm doing like this. So let's go ahead and remove these two people. And now it's back to me. I just want you to leave this video knowing that Zoom can be a fun and an easy way for you to connect online. Even with this Zoom body bombing party crasher stuff that's happening, there are easy steps that you can take to keep uninvited people out and at the same time be able to help with disruptions that are even unintended from the people that you want to be in in your Zoom call. So keep having fun with Zoom. Just take care, pay some special attention to these safety features and you'll still have a fun way of being together online.